Hello, Dr. Kaufman. Welcome to Modern Healthspan. It's great to have you back on our channel. I am delighted to be back. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. So congratulations on having your second book published. Um, it's I, I've read it. I mean, it was really informative and, and I love the way you structure everything and well thought out and put all that detail in. Wonderful. And I love those little asides that you have, like in like the handwritten aside. <laughs> I love those. So um, but so we probably have some new audience members who did not have the chance to hear your previous interview. So it would be really good if you could kind of go through how you think about aging and how you think about supplements for aging. Sure, sure. So um, I like to think about aging from a cellular perspective. I was a cell biologist before I was a physician. So I get to incorporate how cells interact with organs and how all of that sort of incorporates and joins into one big organic being and then how we decelerate over time. So from a cellular perspective, uh, I started this journey when there was very little known um, or organized in terms of cellular aging. So years ago, I sat there, uh, went through all the literature that I could possibly find and tried to organize it as well as I could. Disorganization drives me absolutely bonkers. So I set out to organize it and I created what I call the seven tenets of aging. And I know other people talk about the hallmarks. And I think if you just rearrange them, they end up in similar categories. Um, there's more, more hallmarks and they keep adding more hallmarks. Um, but honestly, they fit within the seven tenants. So I'm sticking with my seven tenants. I'm very happy with those. Um, and anyway, so so very briefly, we can talk about the seven tenants. And I will sort of fly through these. And I will add sort of things that I've decided are becoming more important over time. Um, so, so tenant one is DNA alterations. Especially in book one, we talked about telomere length and epigenetic modifications, uh, of course, very, very, very important, uh, but also in the DNA world. And one of the things I talk about in book two is preserving DNA structure and DNA falls apart over time and it gets attacked by free radicals and a variety of other toxins. So it's incredibly important to protect our DNA. And so I've now put that under tenant one. Um, Tenant two, of course, is our mitochondria. We have to have energy for our system. Uh, big things in that category are, of course, NAD um, uh, failure over time. We don't have enough as we get older for a variety of reasons. We talk about free radicals and failure of the ability to scavenge these radicals over time. Of course, mitochondria create radicals. Uh, and it also creates ways to get rid of them. But of course, over the course of time, uh, we don't do as good a job as we should. Um, adding to that pile, now I am deeply diving into sirtuins and especially sirtuin three, which is the mastermind deacetylator of the mitochondrial system. And that is my latest obsession. So if you get me started, I'll never shut up about that. Um, and in book two, I also talk about something called the mitochondrial transition pore, which is a pore that flickers open and closed uh, on the wall of your mitochondria, flickers normally as, um, as when you are young. And as your mitochondria age, it sort of stays open longer and longer due to a variety of pathological processes. And the longer it stays open, the more likely is your mitochondria is to die. So controlling that pore has become of utmost importance. Um, so that's mitochondria. The next one is pathways. And of course, this is your sirtuins, the seven mammalian sirtuins, the AMP kinase pathway, and of course, the mTOR pathway. And we can argue all day long if rapamycin is good or bad for you. Of course, we, we all have our particular views. Um, but as I said, I've become absolutely obsessed with the individual sirtuins. I think we all do an incredibly good job of activating sirtuin one, but I think three got forgotten a long time ago or whenever we got to it. Uh, so one, three, and six are the important ones. And three is just crucial for mitochondrial and health. So again, I'm obsessing about that lately. So you'll see that I get stuck on it in my brain. Uh, so after pathways is quality control. And this is uh, DNA repair mechanisms, protein repair mechanisms, and falling into this category too now, it's going to be RNA because that, that's, that's a huge problem. And I also throw autophagy into this category because it's recycling of when things don't go quite well. So uh, if you follow my factory analogy, which I talk about in book one, you have to check your widgets, fix them when you can, and uh, recycle them when you can't fix them. So that's all one big quality control category. 
Uh, five is your inflammatory system. Um, I also call it the security system. Your immune system protects you as you are young. It turns on you as you get older and it becomes your inflammasome. And there are many, many reasons they become more inflamed over time. And of course, this is incredibly pathologic and contributes to significant aging. Uh, tenant six, I call individual cell requirements. I know I'm speeding through this. I apologize. Um, category six, individual cell requirements. Um, we want to get rid of our senescent cells, which I sort of harp on a lot in book two. We want to keep our stem cells as healthy as possible. And then there's the understanding that a bone cell is different than a brain cell, which is different than a red cell. So to be very careful in terms of make sure we nurture all of our cells as we get older. And then the last category is uh, waste management, which is mostly glycation issues and, of course, lipofusion accumulation. And I spent six months before being obsessed about sirtuins with being obsessed with glycation. And I created the seven steps to getting rid of glycation because I'm kind of a bit of a junk food junkie. And I'm like, if I can eat junk food, I can battle it out. So there are innumerable ways that we can fight off AGEs and get rid of glucose and all that sort of thing. But anyway, so... That in a nutshell of the seven tenets of aging. And every time I learn more, it just sort of expands one of the categories. Stress is an underlying cause of many health issues. And while most people focus on finding relief from stress through meditation or other forms of mental exercise, the stress may be caused by lack of a key nutrient. Magnesium is one of the most important nutrients for our health because it plays many crucial roles, supporting muscle and nerve function. It also impacts the release of stress hormones like cortisol and blocks the activity of stimulating neurotransmitters, leading to a more peaceful and restful state. To ensure that we have sufficient magnesium, my wife and I are taking Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Magnesium Breakthrough has the full spectrum of seven types of magnesium, specifically formulated to reach every tissue in our body for maximum health benefits. One of the important reasons we chose Magnesium Breakthrough is it's made with all natural ingredients, soy-free, gluten-free, lactose-free, non-GMO, free of chemicals and fillers. To get 10% discount on Magnesium Breakthrough, simply go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern. Use the code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. So actually, one thing I wanted to go back, you talk about Eclonia Carva, which has Fucoidin in, but you don't talk about SIRT6 very much. Uh, do you see activating SIRT6 as kind of important? And, and do you see Eclonia Carver doing that? So excellent question. Um, when I was going through book two, I was more focused on other things. I hadn't done my deep dive into Sirtuins yet. I'm actually doing that right now. Um, that actually does activate Sirtuin 6 quite well. Uh, I'll tell you that cyanidin actually does it better. Um, but yes, it absolutely does do it. I think in the order of importance is going to be one, three, and then six. So depending on how obsessed people become with longevity, we'll sort of determine how much sirtuin activation you want. Um, I think ultimately it'd be fantastic if you took pterostilbene, you threw in some hinocchial and then throw in some assigned in, and then that would be your sirtuin boost for the day. But at the moment that does not exist, although maybe someone listening to this is going to be a fantastic entrepreneur and create that for me. Okay, excellent. Uh, so, so kind of going back to the, the overview, can you talk about then how you uh, rate the different supp supplements based on the tenants? Sure. So, so again, back to the idea that I can't stand disorganization. What I did, and once upon a time, people would say, you know, Agent X is really good for you. And I'd be like, why? And they're like, because grandma said so. I'm like, well, that doesn't really count the mustard, right? That, that doesn't really count. So what I did is after creating the seven tenants, I thought, well, what does it do in each of the seven tenants? So I plowed into the literature, you know, the good news is I'm a physician. I have a huge library. Um, and I can pull pretty much anything from anywhere. And I read a gazillion articles and asked the question of what does Agent X do in tenant one? Does it affect your, you know, your DNA? Does it affect your telomerase? Is it, is it an epigenetic modifier? And then how significant is the evidence? And so what I decided, um, it started out as checks and minuses and it turned into a numerical system whereby if it did absolutely nothing, it got a zero. If it did something in theory, in culture, or in a test tube, it got a one. 
if it did something in rodent models or any uh, mammal that was not a human, it got a two. And it can't be one study. It had to be significant studies. Uh, and if there were studies in humans that demonstrated efficacy, it would get a three. So every agent, and this takes me forever. Everyone wants to know I haven't rated every agent in the world. I'm like, because it takes months to do this. Um, but every agent that I have now rated, and there's giant charts on my website, comes with a seven digit rating number. And I will tell you that my my rating tends to be conservative because frequently people have not asked the questions that I want them to ask. You know, does Agent X do such and such in humans? And the answer is we don't really know because uh, no one's looked. So I can't give something a three that probably deserves a three. Therefore, a lot of agents are sitting with a lot of twos because just no one's you know done the actual research to figure it out. So ratings generally can go up over time, but they don't go down. Uh, but the idea of the rating system and having these silly, uh, the number system is that when you create your own protocol, the idea is that you want to make sure you address all of the issues of aging, all the cellular aspects and not just one, because I would find that people would take 27 antioxidants, but then ignore their DNA repair mechanisms or ignore their glycation. So the idea is to address sort of all of them to make sure you get a sort of an even keel um, protocol when it comes to longevity. Okay. So if you, so looking at the book, I, it's very detailed and you go into each of the supplements. <laughs> so if I was going to set up my own regimen, how, how would, I, how would I use the book or the two books, the other one as well to do that? That is a great question. Um, so <laughs> Uh, I got better at it in book two than in book one, because the other thing that I noticed is that all the research is done on particular cell systems or organ systems. So by the time I got to book two, I realized that some agents were better at certain organs than others, right? So in book two, there's a chart with organ systems, and then book two agents has it. So if you want to, for example, address your gut health, you know, you go down the chart and there's six or seven things that do that versus your heart versus your muscle versus whatever. Um, in book one, I didn't do that because I wasn't as organized. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't think anyone was going to read book one. So it, I didn't completely do everything that I probably should have. And now that I will in the future, that being said, um, picking a protocol depends on many things. It, it starts with how old you are. And it starts out with if you have any concomitant medical problems, because very easy stuff drops um, at very reasonable times in your life. And you need to address the big stuff. And then you can sort of get more granular and you look at diseases. So as an example, uh, in book one, I created something called the panacea. And the idea was I asked everyone, like, how many agents you'd be willing to take? And they all said five tops. I'm like, OK, five, five, five is reasonable. So I picked a spread of things that would best cover as many of the tenants as possible. So the panacea basically became pterostilbene because it was a sirtuin activator as well as you know, a variety of other things. Astaxanthin, because it's a fantastic free radical scavenger and, and uh, anti-inflammatory. Uh, NR, because there was no NMN at the time, but basically you needed an NAD precursor. Uh, curcumin, because it was a huge anti-inflammatory, reduced lipofusion accumulation, and a variety of other things. And carnosine, because it was a transglycosylator and it had addressed uh, category uh, seven. So the panacea, for the most part, for healthy people over 40, is still the best place to start. Um, following that, then you want to think about, well, how many agents am I willing to take? And do I have any concomitant medical problems? So every medical problem generally falls into failure of one of the, one or more of the cellular categories of aging. So as an example, it's the easiest example, if you are pre-diabetic or diabetic, you clearly have glycation issues, which means you need to load points in category five or seven, right? Um, if you have, um, uh, inflammatory issues, then you want to worry about the inflammatory uh, categories. So if you can figure out what you have, we can pretty much fix you. A lot of cardiac issues, for example, is mitochondrial failure, right? Liver failure is frequently mitochondrial failure. So you want to pinpoint what you're going to take by what you're trying to fix, unless you just want a general overall thing. And then you just hit things that have the most points in the most categories. Mm -hmm.